All right, welcome back to another The Wheel Reads Character Deep Dive. And we're going to get into one of my favorite characters, which is Talmanes. Talmanes? Manes? Tamanas? I think it's Tamanas. Is that how you pronounce it? I always say Tamanas or Tamanas. Just say Manes. I'll call him Manes. Yeah. Um, and then the last name I'm not going to try to pronounce. Um, I, I'll try. Uh, Della Vindi? Della Vindi? I don't know. Guys, let me know in the comments how it's supposed to be pronounced. I should have looked at the pronunciation guy before starting this video, but you know what? It is late at night. I'm editing a podcast and I just decided just to pump out another video real fast because I needed a break. So here we go. Full spoiler warning. Um, this is going to have spoilers all the way through the end of the books. So um, in fact, um, if you're looking at my videos and you're like, who is Talmanes or who is, yeah, who's, who is he? Um, go ahead and just stop now. Um, cause he's not one of the characters that show up early. So, um, so far I haven't given you anything but a name, so you can leave now. Otherwise stick around. I'll give you my thoughts, kind of a little bit about backstory about him. Um, and, um, just how I feel about the character. Like I said, he's one of my favorites. So if not my favorite character, so let's jump right in. Who is he? Uh, Tamanis is a noble of Kyrian. Um, he, uh, how does he look? Um, he's about a full uh, head shorter than Matt. Uh, so we have Matt as being an average size guy. So Tamanis is pretty short. Um, I think uh, uh, Matt's like 5'11". So if he's a full head shorter, you know, he's probably like 5'5", five, five, maybe even shorter than that. Um, five, four, um, his traditional, um, the noble haircut of, um, the Kyrians, which is, uh, shave your head, uh, halfway. So like, yeah, something like this and then powder it. And yeah, that's how they wear their hair. Um, it looks really weird. Um, if you want to go back and see someone do this, Andrew from the black tower podcast did this live. I think it was on the, um, twat, uh, podcast, a charity stream like two years ago. You can probably go look at TWOT podcast on YouTube and find that old video and find wherever. I think there's timestamps where the Black Tower is. I think he did it live on his por portion, or he might have done it live on the Dusty Wheel. Either way, you can kind of see what the hairstyle looks like as they do it in person. I think it was on the Dusty Wheel. So, yeah. Anyways, um, so let's talk about him for a little bit. Um, as far as his backstory, there's not a whole lot besides he is from a, um, from, a, you know, a noble house, noble family. Um, it does allude to that throughout the books. Um, um, especially when he starts going through his lineage with Tuan later on, um, and Iwadar, um, and he can trace back his lineage pretty far. Um, and that impresses, uh, Tuan and the Shan Shen. Cause of course they're all about that lineage, uh, in relationship to, uh, Arda Hawkwing. So, um, um, and, and what does he do in the books? Well, he is basically Matt's right hand man when it comes to Matt's army. Um, so the band of the red hand, which I've done a video about already. Um, and I mentioned Tom on in that video as well, um, was formed in book five fires of heaven. Um, that chapter, I think it was chapter 43, uh, when they're marching out of, um, um, the, the, the dragon spine or, or the, or the dragon wall. Um, and, and marching into the wetlands, uh, or the Westlands, and uh, Tamanis is leaving Kyrian to help Rand out, um, leaving a cavalry. And Matt is kind of just leaving because he wants to get the hell out of there and realizes by accident that the Shido are about to ambush them. So Matt quickly goes and runs them down and says like, hey, hey, hey I'm Rand's friend, Matt. You might not know me, but listen to me. I'm going to take charge and tell you that you don't go this way. Otherwise, you're all dead. And we're going to go this way. And Matt leads them all to victory. Pretty much after that, Tamanis is like, I like this guy. So uh, he ends up making a, our Matt ends up making him number two uh, of basically of, of the entire force. Um, and as the army keeps on moving, uh, are getting larger, uh, Tom Honest plays a larger and larger role. Even at one point when Matt leaves for a while, uh, he's left in charge of the band. So, um, um, uh, definitely a major character when it comes to, uh, towards the last part of the books. 
a little bit about his personality um, that um, just I like so much. Um, I'm not going to, there's another book that Brandon Sanderson wrote that there's a character there that I really compare him to. He has this noble way about him, but Talmanis is not afraid to kind of hang out with the commoner as well, where a lot of the Kyrian um, nobility separates themselves from the commoners. And Talmanis is kind of like this in the beginning where he's kind of looks down on the commoners, but uh, seeing that Matt is one and gets a lot of respect for Matt, um, you know, he definitely uh, moves into a more of a, um, a role of, of hanging out with the average guy uh, and the commoner. And uh, even though the second guy in, in command um, uh, behind Tomanis, it, it comes from a, a commoner ranks uh, in the military. Uh, they learn to work really well together. Um, so just really enjoy that dynamic of him and, and the growth that he has throughout the books. And then especially when Sanderson took over, cause that's really where he comes alive. I mean, yes, there are tons of parts, whether it's an Ibudar or, um, our, our, our just minor type of skirmishes and Saladar, uh, things like that, uh, where Tomanis does play some roles, but then once it gets into Sanderson, you get to Henderstap and, and a bunch of these other places, um, you know, I, I just like how his character changes. Some people didn't like that as much, but you know how he gives Matt crap without Matt even knowing he's giving him crap and has that kind of tongue in cheek type personality. And I just find it humorous and funny and really just love the character and the way that Brandon Sanderson lifted that character off of the page. Um, like, obviously, like I said, he does play some roles in the bulk of Robert Jordan's work. And he really has expanded role towards the last battle. Um, so let's talk about some of the things he did um, and kind of leave it at that. Because as far as history goes, not a whole lot is known about his early life. Um, it doesn't say anything in the book or in the companion from what I can gather. Um, if you guys know anything, please leave in the comments um, uh, about uh, your thoughts on Tomanis. Um but yeah, so, you know, like I said, we meet him in, in book five. Um, he immediately gets uh, gets on Matt's good side. Um, and then from there in Lord of Chaos, he leaves the Calvary um, and, and the horse banner known as Talmanis' Thunderbolts. Uh, so he's in charge of the Calvary. Um, uh, he's given control of the band when Matt goes to Saladar. Um, um, and he's told to stay close to Saladar, Saladar in the Aes Sedai in case Egwene seeks protection. Um, he keeps the band close as Matt moves on to do other things. Um, yeah, uh, meets with some of the Merindian nobles later in the Path of Daggers, uh, recruits some people there. Um, you know, does a lot of politicking because uh, that's what he's really good at. I mean, he's uh, being from a noble family from Kyrian uh, and knowing the game of houses, our game of, yeah, the game of houses, uh, Days de Mar. He, he's very good at playing that and, and doing the politics side of things. Um, so I do like that aspect of him as well. Uh, fast forward to um, Pass the Knife of Dreams. Uh, where, you know, um, we get to Brandon Sanderson books. Of course, he goes to Hinderstap with, uh, with Matt, which is always a, at least one of my favorite uh, little towns in the books. Uh, maybe I'll do a whole, actually, well, when I do the geography, it might be years before I get to that because uh, I'm kind of doing town by town, but I can't wait to talk about Hinderstap uh, and get more into it. Um, you know, and, and he's present when Varen shows up as well. And Varen delivers the letter to Matt that, of course, Matt never opens up. Uh, or he opens it way later. Uh, actually, no, Matt doesn't open it. Oliver opens it. <laughs> it's like, holy crap. Uh, so Oliver does that. Um, so uh, now I'm trying to remember everything. Um, and then, of course, he's at the at the last battle. It's really uh, um, uh, in charge of helping Eludra and, and them with the dragons and making sure they're guarding that forces for the cannons. Um, those are the dragons uh, being shot down um, are, are shot shooting into the uh, Forsaken's army or the Dark One's army. So um, plays a major role there. Um, yeah. Um, as far as um, anything else from it, um, not much else I can uh, think of. I mean, presumably he survives the last battle. Um you know, it says that, you know, the very last scene that we have with them is, uh, is he and Ludra were still firing the dragons at the very end to the very end of the fighting. So you can assume that he, that he survived. Um, it's, it's, uh, it never, I, I don't think that it made the companion says, and he says the after effects. And I, I, I should look at the companion and see what it says, but I, I, but as far as what it says in the books, um, it doesn't actually say what happens to him after that. 
Um, as far as what he would do, knowing him, um, probably after the last battle, either stay uh, with the band and continue um, uh, uh, running the, that army if if uh, Matt uh, if, if it still exists afterwards, or just return to Kyrian uh, and kind of live in a retirement type lifestyle. Um, I could see Tamana is doing that as well uh, now that Dragon Peace is in effect. Um, like I said, Tamanis is personality wise, one of my favorite characters, just one of those guys that comes across as very, uh, uh, humorous at the same time, not quiet. It's one of these really dynamic characters that you can kind of take both ways, but just kind of lifts off the page, especially with Sanderson's writing, uh, and just love some of his remarks and the way he talks to Matt. It's just, it's just wonderful to me. And, um, and I can't gush enough about how much I love Tom Manis's personality, um, let me know your thoughts. Um, if there's anything that I didn't cover, I know these videos are short, but we're doing tertiary characters. I know Tomatis plays a bigger role later, but uh, he's not a bulk character, you know, a main character through the majority of the series. Um, so, any other things that I missed or anything um, that you think about his personality or anything about his backstory or um, that, that you guys have found maybe through Robert Jordan's interviews. I tried to find some of them. I found some stuff with Sanderson uh, talking about creating him, but not a lot from RJ. So uh, be happy to hear some of that stuff. Uh, feel free to leave comments. Um, most of these little character deep dives are going to be pretty short. Um, like I said, I'm not going to go through line by line, everything he does inside the series, because hopefully um, if you're watching this video, you've read the series because otherwise I'm spoiling a ton of crap. So like I said, like these videos, subscribe. If you want to let me know who else I should do a deep dive on, obviously if you pick someone that has a wealth of information, it'll probably be like an hour long video. Um, like if you ever wanted me to do Rand, I don't really want to do Rand, um, but just the amount to talk about uh, would be tremendous. But I like doing these little short um, uh, tertiary characters and just kind of talking about how I feel about them and then also some of their personality traits and just a little bit more about them. So uh, feel free to suggest a character for a deep, deepish dive. And um, um, yeah, like and subscribe. And until next time, guys, peace. Peace.